Wait, wait a second. That's it. Holy heck, that holy fudge, that was it. Hello, folks. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. I am the one, the only. I am a hobo, Tom. I can't believe it. That was a darn, darn short episode of SmackDown. That was weird. Oh, how do I go about that? First, I'd like to say hello to everyone out there. And contented cunt. I love the name of Discord. Thank you very much for agreeing with me for whatever I said. I think it was about Mandy Rose. Whatever it was, you, sir, have earned that six count. Or man. I honestly forget. I think it was something about Mandy Rose. It was about some woman. Some female wrestler. Now for the life of me, because I just got finished reading a scientific paper. I just told my one temporary job I couldn't do it because they needed to give me more time. They just can't say, oh, well, we need you to come in tomorrow. It's like, uh, no. I have my other job I need to keep. And I kind of can plan with them better. I just need, like, like, if they would have told me, honestly, if they would have told me, like, Monday, I could say yay or nay to it. Because my boss already made the schedule. Because my boss is a good boss. Well, I don't want to necessarily... Screw them over there. But at the same time, I know I signed up for it, but fish happens. Oh, this is my machine gunner shirt. Oh, I forgot I wore that. Again, well, 
with all that nonsense set aside, I apologize for, for my mad ramblings. Um, it's getting late. It's a uh, red wineless Friday because it's Lent. So I had my bread and cheese, and I'll tell you what that Bengal spice tea. Whoa! I put in four tea bags in the coffee maker. I'm gonna use one next time because man, that cinnamon, nutmeg, and sugar. I don't know what they put in that stuff and pepper. No, oh, wrong pepper. But stuff they put in there. That whoa woke me up a little bit. So, but I'm not here to wake you up. I'm not here to be woken up by you. I'm here to talk about some SmackDown. Again, if you'd be like um, Mr. or Mrs. Consent the Country, um, you can feel free to chat with me in Discord. You can also feel free, just like What's Your Face did last show, leave a comment. I will try to give you a shout out and give you a dedicated shout out video. What's about this show? So it starts off Goldberg. Goldberg. <laughs> he's like, and he's there. He got booed. People like the fiend. People don't necessarily like Goldberg. He's like, it's not about who was last. It's who's next. And then Roman Reigns comes out, and, and the crowd is vicious. The crowd didn't know. The crowd started to cheer Roman Reigns, and they're like, wait a second. We're getting more Roman Reigns. You both suck. You both suck. And, and Goldberg's like looking around confused. And he's like, Yeah, I heard that. On the way, only Goldberg can Roman Reigns says, I'm next. Challenge accepted. Uh, then we went, which I thought was really weird because they were going to do a rematch of the Bailey versus Naomi. Um, Bailey takes the mic, Sasha, and she says, Sasha Banks comes up, and wow, Sasha Banks' bottoms are getting lower and lower all the time. They're like just barely above, like her, like super skimpy Brazilian bikini, Telly Savalas. But, down there. Yeah, you and I have a little bit more roughage up here than she does down there. Because I'll tell you what, if you needed to find ladies, if you need to find a wax, just ask Sasha Banks where she goes. Yep. Uh, so with that, Naomi gets distracted. Uh, Bailey gets her from behind, uh, but of course, Naomi's not one to stay down, and then Sasha Banks attacks her in the ring. Ding, 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 DQ. This was terrible. The reason why it's terrible, it's twofold, well, threefold, or, yeah, we'll find out how many. One is a rematch from Super Showdown, which was not that terrific of a match. Um, I will give the ladies credit. At least they're back in their normal outfits. So they'll probably feel better. But one, it's a rematch of something that literally happened yesterday. No bueno. Two, Sasha Botch shows up. Just not my favorite person. Not my preferred wrestler of choice. And three, she causes a DQ. We have a fill, so we have a fill, a dusty piece of toast. And then, of course, so with a dusty piece of toast like this, you know something, some shenanigans are going to happen. But this toast match. It's terrible. They just. You know, I've had it. It was, it was a waste of a probably good seven minutes if you think about the entrance and the time Bailey took on the mic. 
Yeah. Um, so what happens is that Lacey Evans comes out to help Naomi because Naomi's getting beat up then by both Bailey and Sasha Bosch. Oh, I mean Sasha Banks. I'm sorry, I slipped there. And then the referees come out to try and break him up. And then Ref Jessica. Ref Jessica. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Oh, please don't make a match. But you know what? Someone in WWE gave gave referee Jessica all the power. Because she started to make her own match. Said, oh, you know what? I'm the referee. My rule is final. Tag team YouTube versus YouTube. And that was... I've never seen a referee make a match unannounced like that. Normally, the ring announcer, says, he, he goes to his earpiece and says, Oh, yeah, oh, 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 indeed. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been informed that management is now sanctioning this match. We have now have a tag team match. So generally, there's normally some reference to management or W or WWE officials have sanctioned that have made this match. Vince, Steph, and Triple H, and maybe Shane. That makes sense. Now we have the referees. One from Monday night, wearing of being being partial to wrestlers. They can't do that. They're supposed to be impartial. Two. You have referee making matches. They're not supposed to make matches. They're supposed to officiate matches. That's like the, the umpire in baseball saying, no, 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 no. Baltimore Orioles, you're not going to face the Boston Red Sox. Um, I'm going to postpone this, and you're going to face the, the California Angels and still, instead. Uh, I don't know. We'll see. Uh, so then we have the next. So, so that mass was a piece of toast. That was terrible. This was a little bit better though. This was a Sasha Sa Sasha Botch. I mean Sasha Banks and Bailey taking on Naomi and Lacey Evans. Um, Naomi, she just starts by flying over the top because Banks and Bailey were, were kind of rolled out. They wanted to, to huddle up, regroup. Naomi's not having any of that. It's like we're going to get this match started right now. So Naomi flies over the top. Uh, Bailey eventually stomps Naomi once they get back in from commercial, which is weird. I do miss the picture in picture. Again, Sasha just got that. She always gets that extra kick in that, that dastardly Sasha botch. At least it's not in the least Nikki Bell is not kicking her. That's, I guess, something good. Uh, Lacey Evans, Naomi gets beat up a lot. Lacey Evans, the hot tag. She swept the leg of Bailey. She got to the outside ropes. Bailey was still standing. So Lacey Evans did the one smart thing. She swept the leg to get Naomi down. Drop the slingshot elbow. Wait, am, am I cheering about Lacey Evans? Indeed. Uh, then there was the... Flying crossbody by Naomi. Uh, Sasha Banks. Got slammed into the barricade by Lacey Evans. And then Lacey Evans got slammed into the barricade by Sasha Banks. Uh, then Naomi did that sunset, sunset flip roll up. On to Bailey and Naomi wins. And Naomi picks up her, 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 her win, which is 50-50 booking. Mm. WWE, you pulled a fast one on us. But I'll tell you what, this match was a lot better than the other one. It was a good, solid cheeseburger match. Then we have um, New Days in the back again. They, they like to start from the back. That's pretty cool. I can deal with that. Uh, they confront Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode because this is going to lead to a match between Robert Roode the glorious Robert Roode and Kofi Kingston. However, Robert Roode's signature move is the spine buster. His finishing move 
That's the glorious DDT DDT. So WWE has to get their kind of sign thing straightened up. And I guess he won a bunch of tag. Oh no, he was. Yeah, that's right. He actually was US champion for a bit and he was tag team champion for a bit. I forgot all about that. So yeah, that does make sense. That he was a four time WWE champion. And then I'm sure, because I remember, yeah, he did hold the U.S. belt. I think he was a tag champion with Dolph. And then, of course, NXT, he was NXT champion. That might make sense. I stand corrected, folks. I'm sorry. Although, I, I can't remember the fourth one, though. That's okay. I'll, I'm sure you guys out there in the YouTube universe will correct me. Saying a bunch of bad things about my lineage and saying I don't know anything about pro wrestling. Some things I do, some things I don't. I'm okay with that though. I was kind of preoccupied about getting stuff done. When am I going to do stuff? Why is the one job? Why does the one job like not give me fair notice? But that's that's a whole other issue. Uh, especially because it's not bike week yet. Like the fourth class. Punk bike racers or something. I don't know. But so with this, Robert Roode and Kofi Kingston starts off just like most Dolph Ziggler matches. Robert Roode's picking up bad habits. We have Russ Hold Mania. We got a bunch of headlocks and arm bars. Um, Robert Roode did go for the monkey flip, but but I think he actually told. I think he actually told. You can see him almost selling the spot. He used to be a lot slicker about it. He says there that extra second though. And looks kind of funky. Funky like a monkey flip that doesn't work. Because the monkey flip did not work. Kofi Kingston kind of powered through that. He kind of went with the momentum, landed on a drop kick onto Robert Rude. Uh, then, then then Rude was smart. Because he went to the outside, Biggie was there. Uh, Dolph Ziggler was yapping to Kofi Kingston, so the referee was distracted. Robert Roode looked up at the ref. The ref was honestly about two seconds away from turning around. Hit the steel steps with his like hands, put his head on it, <laughs> and looked like he got rammed into the steel steps. <laughs> and Big E was there. And then he's like, Robert Roode's like, oh, ref. And the ref's like, you. You, I, I, I heard you, you Biggie, you're out of here. And of course, I was Eddie, 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 Eddie somewhere, wherever he is in heaven, wrestling the Macho Man and the Ultimate Warrior, and having tequila shots with George the Animal Steel, and. And trying to have balls of wine with Andre the Giant. I'm sure he's up there smiling right now. Eddie was so good. Even in his days in ECW, the Malenko Guerrero Classics was. If you ever see one? If you ever want to see great technical wrestling, fast-paced storytelling, Malenko Guerrero Classics. Nothing can really touch it nowadays. A few things can. Ugh, so few and far between, though. So, again, Robert Root pulled the Eddie, and then he starts to mock New Day, which is the best. He still has, like, the best spine buster, though. Which is, like, so good. And then Rude eventually did a roll-up, because Dolph's there. He distracted Kofi a little bit too much. And Robert Rude got the roll-up victory. That's good to see. Rude picks up a victory. But then, well, this match was a cheeseburger match. But then what happened, though, during the match, Mandy Rose was watching Dolph Ziggler. And then, boo, Sonya Deville showed up. Boo. Boo, Sonya Deville. And, and she's like, oh, you're watching. And she said to Mandy, oh, you're watching your man. What? 
Boo, so you the villain. Boo, boo, boo. So you is turning into like that girlfriend's girlfriend that says, "Girl." Like mainly because, well, like when Mandy was seeing Otis, Sonya's like that girl. Like, girl, you can do better than Otis. So boo Sonya Deville. I'll forever boo you. Now I double boo you. Boo, boo. Oh, what did that woman do? The Princess Bride. Boo, boo. Bow down to the king of filth. Boo! And Princess Buttercup's like, why are you booing me? Because you had true love but married you that! Or something to that effect. I can't bring it up because I can't risk any more copyright violations. But it is a kind of funny thing, though. I don't know. What? Ah, uh, that's uh, so okay. That's too much work. But yeah, you get the point. The fact that I'm booing Sonya Deville so much. Um... So she was there, and then of course you have Otis. He just looks totally dejected. Obviously, Otis was missing the man's was missing is missing the male rejection gene, or the male rejection gene has not kicked in yet. It's not producing RNA to make rejection to make rejection based proteins because he's still kind of depressed. Tucky, his friend Tucker Knight comes by. Don't worry, Otis. We'll hook you up. I'll hook you up, make you feel better. I want to see Otis and Nia Jax. That would be interesting. I know Nia Jax is coming off like... I want to say it's like knee surgery to both knees. I don't know. I forget if that's double knee surgery. So I forget if double knee surgery. So I for double knee surgery on a single knee. That's when you like tear your, for an example, your MCL and ACL. They have to actually perform kind of two surgeries on the same knee. Or if it's a double knee surgery because you're doing both knees because you bore the ACL in both knees. Again, any real doctors out there or medical doctors, I know it's sometimes interchangeable. So again, you can feel free to correct me. Then poor dejected Otis is what it is. Then Renee Young comes out. So she's doing the contract signing between Shinsuke Nakamura and, and Braun Strowman. And, and of course, of course, Fidel Zane is there. I mean, I mean, Sammy Castro. Wait, yeah. Yeah, whoever he is now. He does look like a 1950s Cuban revolutionary for some reason. Oh uh, yeah, but when he comes out. Uh, for the first thing, Sammy says, "We can all be civilized. Why don't you take a seat in your chair? Why don't you take your chair?" Yeah, Braun took that chair, right? He took that chair. I don't even think I could do it with this chair, not as smoothly. But he just said, "Boom!" and the chair went flying. I can't do that sitting with this chair. It's it's actually a little too heavy, and it's that's my good chair, not my. We can share. But um, one day I will get a much better chair. So I have to get that particular height that I like. That's many paychecks away. Yeah. <laughs> Monetization away. Uh, so Braun chucks the chair. It's like, okay, you know what? Fudge this. Braun's like, okay, I'm done with all this antics. I'm, I'm just going to sign the contract. And then I could take on all three of you. And he's like, oh, you'll take on all three of us? Oh, here's space for an amendment. And, um, yeah. So Cesaro, Sami Zayn, and Shinsuke Nakamura all sign. So it's going to be a three-on-one handicap match at Elimination Chamber, which is three weeks from Sunday, if I understand it right. Which makes it... Oh, wait, I can go to my book. Because I can't really put that in a weird corner. So that would make it... The 15th of March. Because that makes sense. So that would be... 1, 2, 
two more weeks till WrestleMania then after that. And actually, that is when my suspension is over. Oh, I'm so happy my suspension will be over. I can live stream again. Again, as long as I can make it for Triple Mania, I'm excited. So uh, then, of course, they triple team Braun, put Braun through. Uh, Braun gets a Braun moves table. We'll get this out of the way. Renee runs out of the ring. Um, a referee goes to like somewhere. You see referees going all over the place because they know it's going to happen. You know it's going to happen out. Someone's going to go through that contract announce table. And yep, Braun Strowman is going to go through that announce table. And it's going to be interesting because, oh, he got, he got the. He got Haluva kicked twice by Sami Zayn and the third time. It's going to be interesting because it's going to go one of two ways I'll have to watch and keep an ear to the ground. Because one thing that could happen, Braun could just, because he's getting beat up now, he could just, he could, he could follow classic WWE math and say he's going to keep his title. Or the second thing is that they kind of, I wonder if they could Freebird. The IC belt. Sammy Zayn would probably hog it. I don't know. Whatever. That's something to think about later. Then we had Daniel Bryan taking on Chris Axel with Drew Gulak comments here. Bryan in, is in the corner. He looks pretty happy. Uh, he gets uh, Chris Axel. We haven't seen him in a while on TV. It's good to see you back, Chris Axel. Then Bryan gets beat up by. Curtis Axel pretty good in the corner, gets kicked, gets stomped in, and along the ropes he gets beat, he gets vicious forearms from Curtis Axel. Uh, Drew Gulak's there giving directions, and Brian eventually does make it come out with his yes kicks. Yes, yes, yes. Curtis Axel's put the most fight in them. Remember, at one time he was the Intercontinental Champion. Two thousand twelve, two thousand thirteen ish. I know 2013. I forget if it was like a weird, weird like December 2012 into 2013 or something like that. But he actually had a pretty good showing for himself in multiple roll up, roll up attempts. He really held his own. Um, he kind of held that perfect plex hold a little too long. Even you could hear Drew Gulak saying, "No, no, no, no! Don't pose for the people. Hit the perfect plex." He held it too long. This allowed Daniel Bryan the time to kind of clear the cobwebs. And he put him in the label lock. And that was pretty good. So, oh, oh, and Simon, give this an up. Or the finger of power, the twirly finger, up. And that was that match. So then we have the Miz and Morrison. Slow mo pyro's the best pyro. I don't know. Oh, someone definitely got their degree in TV production because they managed to hit the slow mo switch perfectly. Because you can see, like, literally, like, everything shoot off and Morrison's doing his pose really slow. And the pyro's coming behind him. It looked. Utterly amazing. I think someone told me that WWE is hiring too. Hiring writers. <laughs> I wonder if they have a hobo for writing. But yeah, that's neither, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I'm sure they like to hear my ideas. Yeah, right. Well, I'm not moving up to Connecticut for to be fired in like three weeks. Although, three weeks are worth for 100000 Oh, wait a second. That could pay off a lot of stuff. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I doubt it, though. <laughs> that would be interesting. Ring crew in the local Florida area. I can set up rings. I have my own tools, practically, so. Wait a second. Could do that. Indeed. But Miz and Morrison show up. The slow mo power is the best. The Miz comes out to his thing. Team Morrison comes out to his. That's the best. And then that was like a ref running around, and it's like, wait a second. A ref running around. Something's going on. 
Then sh show the ref, and the Usos come up to Usos come out, and that was fun. It's good to see them off off their 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 time off of the game. Remember, Usos is Lent. Just give up the bottle like I do. Forty days, forty nights. You'll feel somewhat better, and you'll lose a little bit of weight. I lost three pounds since since Wednesday. So that made me feel happy. I just need to lose a lot more of that. That's again, you don't need to hear about that stuff. Again, I shouldn't be having four bison burgers either. But bison so good. Those lamb burgers. Oh, collectible. And what I'm gonna have for, for for Easter. Yeah. Um, but with this, I'll have to figure that out too. Yeah. Oh well I that's that's neither here nor there. And St. Patrick's Day. I have to figure out what I'm doing with St. Patrick's Day. Uh, and I'll think of something. Oh, I do have green shirts I can wear to work at least. Indeed. Uh, so then it's announced that there's going to be an a tag team elimination chamber match. Miz and Morrison, Usos, New Day, Lucha House Party, and Rude and Ziggler. And I'm missing one team. Ms. Morrison, Usos, New Day. Oh, Heavy Machinery. Yeah, Heavy Machinery is a 16. That makes sense because there's four corners and two teams. Yeah. The math does work out. Imagine that, folks. Uh, so Ms. and Morrison aren't too happy about this. So they take on the Usos. This is different, though. I like this. I'll tell you what, John Morrison works great when he can work fast. The Usos love to work fast. Miz, again, very deliberate. Not so much slow pace, but a very deliberate pace, which is good to see. Again, you have that. It's, it's, it's not all bang, 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 bang. It's, it's, it's also not. I'm going to put you in the headlock now. <laughs> I'm going to punch you in the head. Oh. Oh. Yeah. So, again, it's a little bit different pace. It's really nice. Again, not slow, more deliberately paced, but it's it's, it's not a snail's pace, though, which is good. And, again, it's not like, where are things going? And I think way, way too fast. What did I miss? Whoa. Um, again, the Ms. Morrison, they, they, they work, they work great together. They work off each other tremendously. Again, that amazing neck breaker stomp is great. The Miz, his, his great ring generalship, his situational awareness. He knows where he is in the ring. Again, Morrison, uh, his, his ring parkour. The fact that he can, oh, I forget, and the thing in Lucia Underground. He could actually match Ray Phoenix as far as his rope walking, his leaping ability, his ability to do springboards, stuff like that. Not so much the rope walk stuff, but but um, the springboards he's awesome at. It's so he, he does things so smoothly though. He's really a joy to watch. And if you, you didn't get a chance to watch him in Lucha Underground or his good uh, stint in Impact as Johnny Impact, I mean, it is something to go back. In my videos, and actually watch. Especially in Lucha Underground, he's just amazing. Uh, he really developed a lot, I think, in Lucha Underground, especially being able to talk, uh, read lines, carry lines, uh, do do things on the fly too. Miz and Morrison, hey hey, ho ho. Miz and Morrison, hey hey, ho ho. You know, some guy got paid $100,000 to think of that. I could probably do better if I could. Definitely for $100,000. Uh, then, and then Nick Breaker Stomp's amazing. Um, eventually, the Miz gets stuck in the corner. The Usos do the blind tag stuff, which is great. And now you have the, again, them doing their corner kicks. Uh, Morrison does get the knees up for the flash. He went for a roll-up. 
Eventually, the other Uso hits the super kicks and the splash. The Usos win. I'll tell you what. This was this was that one weird show where things got better as the night went on because this was definitely a surf and turf match. And then, dun, 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 dun. so John Cena comes out. Doo, 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 dun, 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 dun. So John Cena comes running out and he gives kind of like a near retirement speech only because he was tearing up. Um, he's saying he doesn't deserve to be at WrestleMania. He hasn't done anything he wants to say that for, for people that made it. He's being really gracious. I think he's really going to retire soon and go more so full time into film almost and kind of mimic almost what The Rock did. The Rock really made his name in wrestling. He cut his teeth on some bad films, but then he got into some good films. Um, John Cena, he's actually been in a bunch of films. I want to say he was in the one movie with LeBron James. Cock blockers. Uh, or blockers. Um, he was in the Fireman movie. The Marine, one of the Marine movies, some other Soldier Comes Home from War movies. Bumblebee, I didn't even see Bumblebee. I should at least, I wonder when that comes back on TNT. Because I heard bad things that, that, he, that he, it was more about him than Bumblebee. But, I don't know. So, yeah, I mean, the speech he gave, it was near retirement. You could actually tell because his voice is breaking. Uh, especially, he, got, he started to get all choked up. So, I don't know if this is a quasi-retirement, kind of like The Rock does. Because every so often, The Rock will show up. Granted, he might do one match, or it's going to be like a definite squash match. And Cena is... I want to say he's getting up there my age in his mid-40s, I think. Um, he does have a family. Uh, at least I think from what we saw in the arena. I think he has uh, young kids. I think he was seeing someone. Because this would be his... As far as I know, his second marriage or the second serious person he was with. I don't know their inner life, but I know he was married. Then he was dating one of the Bellas. And then I think he started to see someone else outside the wrestling industry. Again, if you become a pro wrestler, never date another pro wrestler. For some reason, it never works out. It's, it's weird. Sometimes it does. Like, the majority of them, though, you don't hear anything good unless there has to be, like, that real bond before it. Again, wrestling families are weird. Charlotte's, I think, has been divorced twice. Allegedly, with rumors, Becky had an abortion once. Page is a mess. Brie Bella got kind of lucky, but then Daniel Bryan, that's when he had all his neck issues. Like, and again, the neck is one, neck and head, head, eh. Neck is, that's not something you want to mess with. Nikki Bella had a whole bunch of neck issues. I think she was the one that said she had like a cyst on the brain, which is not good. And then I'm trying to think. Alexa Bliss did dump Murphy. No idea about that. Alicia Fox is a hot mess. I wish she was my hot mess. That's a whole other issue. Um, the Canalses were pretty strong, but they've been together for 
for a long time. I know there's Nikki Cross and Killian Dane, but that kind of makes sense. Mainly because, well, they're both Scottish and they both. It's a, it's a, that tends to be that cultural thing. I want to say Kyrie Sane just got married. I forget if she was. Was it Io Shirai? But yeah, there's that. Asuka, I think, is seeing someone. She's not married. Um, I'm trying to go through my head now. Peyton Royce married Sean Spears. I think Billy Kay is still available. Um, no, they have like they just have their like eternal threesome. Um, who's the other one? Summer Ray just left. I know. Emma. Whatever her name is. Seeing Zack Ryder for a while. So yeah. It, it, but I just know the Flares have bad luck. The Von Erics have been cursed forever. That's that's enough for me to say, say, say no moss. And then... Yeah, Cody met Brandy like before wrestling, though. So that's a whole other issue. She became a wrestler afterwards. Britt Baker became a wrestler. I think after she started to date Adam Cole. Oh, Seth Rollins and all his and all his unsolicited picks. Again, stupid stuff. You have Paige with her sex tape. You have Charlotte showing up, then divorced twice and having naked pictures of her. A bunch of divas have naked pictures of them. <laughs> but that's, again, a whole other issue. So wait a second, where did I go? Oh, yeah, yeah so, so he's getting all choked up. And then, of course, he goes up to the top ramp. People are saying, John Cena rocks. John Cena rocks. Um, they're all saying, thank you. You deserve it. And all the other positive things. Lights, lights go out. The Fiend shows up. And they did amazing camera work for this because you couldn't see the fiend until you got really to a very specific field of view. So that was nicely done. Because you're like, where's the fiend? Wait, he's he's not on that side of the lane. Oh, the camera's moving. Oh, there's the fiend. So it's going to be seen, the fiend versus John Cena. And I wonder if this is going to be when John Cena finally turns heel. And uses the chair against the fiend, like they teased. Two thousand ten ish, sometime between like two thousand eleven and two thousand between eleven and fourteen, when he was feuding with the Wyatts, he refused to turn heel and use the chair on Bray. I forget exactly what that time frame is though. That might have been the time where I was. In New York and was between New York and Kalamazoo, and was actually working and couldn't watch that much TV. Believe that, yeah. I actually had stuff to do. Um, and that was SmackDown. It was good because with this SmackDown, the show got definitely got better as it went on, and the, the opening was terrible. But as it went on, it actually got better, which is always good to see. So that's it. Um, I'll be posting this video as soon as I can. And don't forget, uh, probably Saturday slash Sunday morning, um, I'll be doing my AEW Revolution. Oh, I need that one page. It's my predictions. And then we get to see how good I am at predicting AEW stuff. Oh, wow, that's raw still. So many notes. Impact. Our truth. Where did I get that stuff in? Please. Oh, um, NWA. Whoa, what is it? Oh, there we go. My prediction list. Everyone else, have a good night. Let me clean up a little bit before I forget.
So that would be a very bad thing if I forgot. Have a good night, and I'll see everyone probably Saturday. Bye. Oh, and then also um, to mention next, uh, the following week's schedule. So it'll be Monday. Wait, why don't I use this small candle calendar? I'm going to squint at like, the mini because, you know, it gives you a calendar and calendar. Monday will be raw. I can't do anything. I can't do Tuesday impact because I have to work. Wednesday, so Wednesday will be the NWA. Yeah, NWA AEW show. Friday is the normal SmackDown. That's it. I don't lose anything Saturday. I will also try and see. I have to figure out when Rey de Reyes is. So that's pretty long. Daylight saving time is coming up. Crud, I lose sleep. Crap. Oh well. An issue for me to work out. Again. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.